Hey, you can heal family. I haven't gone too far from our live yesterday. I just said, let me just stay right here and read Job uh, chapter 10. I know that yesterday was pretty heavy. The coaching questions were, were pretty deep. And then the chapter about Job and just learning and understanding how hard it is when things happen to us. And we don't understand, you know, and how it could be hard to understand or believe that God is good. But we talked a lot yesterday about how he is good and he does love you. And um, I don't know, I feel like, I don't know, I think I'm just going to read and, I'll, and I'll, I'll see what the Lord has for us to say. But let's look at Job chapter 10 and welcome to our second day of January. And again, I'm still still very much excited about this new year and what God has for you. Job questions his oppression. Job chapter 10. I am disgusted with my life. Let me complain freely. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. Oh my gosh. Who under who can relate to that, right? Sometimes your life is just filled with bad choices or bad choices people made. So now your life is just a rock right now. Even though it's a very new year, you still feel like what's so great about it? Do you maybe someone has that attitude? Um Job's here saying, I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say to God, don't simply condemn me. Tell me the charge you're bringing against me. What do you gain by oppressing me? Why do you reject me? The work of your own hands while sending joy and prosperity to the wicked. Oh my gosh, why do the wicked prosper, right? Uh, it could seem like that, but in the end, they're really not. Why? Because we know how the story ends. If we go to the very end of Revelation, it, it tells us we win, <laughs> right? We win. You know, we're the head, not the tail, right? So Satan's out here scrambling, trying his very hardest to trip us up in this world and to get us to have these pity parties for ourselves. But we must know that the victory has already been won. It says, do you see things as people see them? Is your lifetime merely human? Is your life so short that you are in a hurry to probe for my guilt, to search for my sin? Although you know I'm not guilty, no one can rescue me from your power. You formed me with your hands. You made me, and yet you completely destroy me. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah, now that that's hard for some people. And, I, and it's kind of like I'm at a loss for words. Sometimes, yeah, God, why did you form me with your own hands? You know, Coach Gina keeps saying, the Bible says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And if you made me and you got a plan for me, and then here we go, this is happening again. Or I'm still suffering at the hand of someone else and I'm still hurting. It says, you guided my conception and formed me in the womb. You clothed me with skin and flesh and you knit my bones and sinews together. You gave me life and showed me your unfailing love. My life was preserved by your care. Yet your real motive, I know this was your intent, was to watch me. And if I sinned, you would not forgive my inequity. If I'm guilty, too bad for me. And even if I'm innocent, I'm filled with shame and misery so that I can't hold my head high. And if I hold my head high, you haunt me like a lion and display your awesome power against me. Again and again, you witness against me. You pour out an ever-increasing volume of anger upon me and bring fresh armies against me. And sometimes, oops, sometimes things can seem so bad that it does feel like God's against you. But the, again, I have to submit, that's the trick of the enemy, right? That's the enemy wanting you to think that. 
wanting you to feel like your life is so terrible that God doesn't care about you anymore. That is not true. I, I, I know. Oh, my God. How do I know that's not true? Well, because God is good. Now, I keep coming back to that, and maybe that's going to be the theme, and we might hold on to that one for, for quite some time. But he, he, what, what is it in Ecclesiastics, you know? That book pretty much talks about how, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, and God, God makes, you know, everything happens in God's time. Like, oh, I don't even know. I'm, I'm kind of at a loss for words right here. Um, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, I don't know what to say. I think it's just that time, over time, as the more you grow in your faith, right, you'll begin to see that God isn't out to hurt you. And like we talked about yesterday, the enemy is John 10 10 says he comes to kill steal and destroy so he wants your life and he wants you to feel like everything bad that's happening is because God doesn't love you and that is not true he loves you with an everlasting love you know he he demonstrated that when he died on the cross for you and that's the gospel story right he, and he wants you to come home to him. That's what we learned yesterday through the word uh, gospel. Evangel, loam, you know, come home to, to me. <sighs> yeah. Um, verse 13. Yet, did I read that, you guys? I don't even know. Yet your real motive, I know this was your intent, was to watch me. And if I send you, not forgive my inequity. Okay. Again and again. Okay, verse 18. Why then do you bring me out of my mother's womb? Why didn't you let me die at birth? Oh, Job. Then I would have been spared this miserable existence. I would have gone directly from the womb to the grave. Well, I have to go back to those things we learned. Why do we suffer? Because God has a calling on your life. Sometimes people do bad things, but the calling on your life is still there. And he wants us to stay on that path and deal with the pain so we can get to our father's business of helping other people and serving other people and being God's hands and feet in this world that just seems so messed up right now. But God's plan for you is not, has not changed, has not changed. And as we go through the healing process, you know, we get a little lighter every day and the depression lifts a little bit and we can see, um, we can see more clearly. I have only a little time left, so leave me alone that I may have a little moment of comfort before I leave for the land of darkness and utter gloom, never to return. It is a land as dark as midnight, a land of utter gloom where confusion reigns and the light is as dark as the midnight. Oh my God. Let's just pray. Let's pray. If anybody's listening and they feel the heaviness, if they can relate to Job in chapter 10, um, with, with the oppression and you're questioning it, like, why am I even here? First, seek help, okay? But God, I lift up my you can heal family who's ever under the sound of my voice. And if they feel like there's no way out and that God is just not who he says he is, I want you to send them comfort now, send them hope and let them experience the peace that you already left them when you ascended to heaven. Let them experience the peace that passes all understanding so that you, Lord, you, Lord, can reign supreme in their heart. And minister to them right now, Lord Jesus. Sit at the throne of their heart and let them know that you are a good God and you love them and care. Comfort their, their tears and their sorrow and help them learn how to work out the pain. Because um, you're a healer 
you're a counselor, you're a friend and you're faithful. So I ask to comfort, comfort them right now. Holy Spirit, you take over. Holy Spirit, you work. I pray um, in Jesus' name, amen. And you guys, you know, sometimes I'm reading this and, and I don't have a coaching answer. You know, I'm just a person and I feel the heaviness too because I relate so much to the chapter. There have been days when things have happened to me and I'm like, why in the world would you not have my dad be in my life? Like, God, that's your fault. Well, no. Um, and, and I can say, honestly, in my life, I never really blamed God. I was always thankful that I knew God. Even as a little girl, I would I remember I would look out of my bedroom window and just look up and see the blue sky and know, okay, God is there, even though I'm sad right now. And I'm young and I'm crying and, you know, there's no one there. It felt like there wasn't. God was. And, um, yeah. Yeah, so prayer works. I know he heard my prayer. It's not a prayer just to be on here praying, but just to, to let you know when you feel like you don't know what to do, the first thing to do is to go to the Lord and, and to talk to him. And it doesn't have to be fancy. It's just talking to him from your heart and expressing yourself and um, allowing allowing his love to wash over you and to comfort you and if you don't feel it go go to the prayer and ask for it say i don't feel you it doesn't seem like you're here um and i want i want to feel your presence and he'll he'll show up for you he's a good god and he loves you all right so we'll be back tomorrow to con to plug away and to continue on thanks for joining me always remember true healing begins with self-love why because God is love and he lives on the inside of you. Bye for now. <laughs>